Hello everybody, welcome back to Talking Walls. We've got a brand new update video today for you. Hope you're keeping well and safe. And we are now officially in the World Cup break, but we are now officially in the Yulin Lopetegui era at Wolves. Uh, it was great to obviously see him uh, at Molyneux on, on Saturday, did a sort of a lap uh, of the ground before the Arsenal game. And it was a really, it was a really good atmosphere before the game. Um, and Lopetegui, everyone warmed to him straight away. And I think we've seen that, haven't we, over the last day or so with the quotes that he's come out with, uh, with the interview we did with the club with uh, uh, Gillen Balagay, and of course with the press conference he did as well, which is available to watch in full on YouTube. Uh, I do recommend you go to check that out because it was a really good uh, press conference with Lopetegui. Now we're going to have a quick look update of what's been going on on the last week or so. Not really much uh, transfer news wise at the moment, but obviously over the next few weeks, as we go into December, I'm sure that will ramp up uh, approaching the winter uh, transfer window. We'll talk about that a little bit more shortly as well. And we'll be trying to give you guys updates as much as we can uh, during the World Cup break and bringing you different content. If there's any types of content you want to see or any former players or staff that you want us to try and bring on for a podcast, do let us know in the comment section down below as well. But Wolves players to look out for in the World Cup. There's five uh, first team Wolves players that have been called up for this year's tournament in Qatar. Of course, there's always going to be players uh, that are Portuguese called up. So Jose Sar will uh, play alongside Ruben Neves and Mateus Nunes uh, at this year's World Cup, which is great. Great to see. Huang Ki Chan as well. Struggled to get consistent game time for Wolves this year, but he will uh, go and represent South Korea, so I'm sure we'll see him get some action. And obviously, the most interesting one is Raul Jimenez has been selected to go and take part for Mexico. Now, um, it's said there's no guarantee he will definitely go with the Mexico squad. There's meant to be one more test uh, this week, so there is a chance that he does return to Wolves. But Raul Jimenez has been called up. Now, this has been a major talking point, not just recently, but probably for the last three or four weeks or so. Because obviously Jimenez, we've not seen him in action in a wolf shirt for a long, long time. And people are disappointed with how the whole situation has been handled in regards to him doing his recovery in Mexico. Then flying to Girona in Spain uh, over the last couple of weeks where the Mexico squad were. He was actually even named in the match squad for Mexico last week uh, when they had a friendly whilst Wolves were playing Leeds in the Carabao Cup. So, of course, a lot of people were disappointed with that. Steve Davis even referenced it in his post-match press conference and said he understood how bad it looked for fans, obviously, seeing that situation. Uh, and it's said that the Mexico Football Federation had uh, apologised for naming Jimenez in the squad. Apparently, he was never going to play, but they named him in the match day squad. Anyway, so I can see, you know, from... I think the whole situation has been handled quite badly. And I think it's very difficult on who to put the blame on. Is it the, to put the blame on Wolves because I haven't sort of communicated what's actually been going on? Do you put the blame on Jimenez? Uh, for, you know, almost prioritising Mexico over walls. But we don't, we genuinely don't know what the case is. So it's very harsh to sort of jump to conclusions. His uh, partner, Daniela, has been talking about it every now and then on Twitter. Uh, she had said um, that he was going to stay at Wolves. He's a mass, obviously massive part, really loves being at Wolves. And he'll be here in January. But obviously, Yulin Lopetegui referenced it yesterday in his press conference that he's disappointed in the situation and doesn't understand how a player that hasn't played for his club can go over to the World Cup and pretty much said that Raul Jimenez should be prioritising Wolves over the Mexico in the World Cup as well. It was tweeted by a Mexican journalist yesterday and Daniela, he, uh, Jimenez's partner, and then posted a face palm emoji. Whatever that means, I suppose that means that, you know, she disagrees with what Lopetegui is saying. But... Yeah, the saga has been very, very strange. And I know somebody had asked a question ahead of our podcast that we're going to be recording later. Oh, if Jimenez plays and scores, are you going to be happy? Of course, I'll be happy. You know, I want to see any Wolves player do well, especially on an international stage. But part of me will still be very disappointed that if he's fit and firing for Mexico, he could have easily been doing that possibly for Wolves over the last couple of weeks and seen us in a much better position in the league table. But who knows? I've referenced it a lot anyway. Lopetegui's first uh, press conference, 
uh, addressed a number of things, some great questions by the journalists there. He did confirm that his contract is three years because strangely that wasn't reported uh, beforehand and he says that he understands that the owners are worried about the where the, the club are in the league right now and does understand that there will be funds to spend in January. Now, I said it before, I don't think Lopetegui would have joined without there being some sort of promises of funds being put into the uh, the first team squad. Uh, a couple of players have been rumoured and linked, former uh, players that Lopetegui has trained and managed, such as Nacho Fernandez and Mariano Diaz from Real Madrid. But as obviously as those become more concrete, we can talk about those a little bit more. Um, and yeah, it was a really good uh, press conference and we've seen lots about him and there's just a certain aura around him right now. I did a video, I think it was possibly last week in regards to his backroom staff. At the time, they were all strong rumours. It has now been confirmed. So we'll quickly go through who has been confirmed as part of his backroom staff and their exact roles because there were one or two uh, members of staff we weren't 100% sure on. So um, he's assistant head coach will be Pablo Sanz. We knew that he... Um, had worked alongside Lopetegui uh, in various roles over the last eight years, including obviously uh, being at Sevilla as well. Uh, Lopetegui is also going to be alongside Juan Pinado, who uh, had been a coach since 2002. He's worked within the academies of Real Madrid and Villarreal and also worked with Sevilla for the last couple of years as well. Fitness coach Oscar Caro is also going to be joining. Uh, he worked with Lopetegui at Spain, Real Madrid and Sevilla. Edu Rubio is going to be a first team coach. He's been coaching in England for the past 15 years or so. He's worked at MK Dons, Chelsea, Crawley Town, Crystal Palace and most recently been the West Ham women assistant manager. Uh, Frank Garagaza, now this was the interesting one. Uh, he's joined Wolves and his title is as a technical advisor. Um, obviously, that was 17 years at Ibar, where he'd done extremely well. He's had a, a few different roles, but most notably, a very uh, well-recognised technical uh, director. Will that see the role of Scott Sellers shift and change over time? Who knows? And uh, Daniel Lopetegui is also going to be joining. He's going to be joining as a performance analyst. Uh, he has worked uh, on uh, opposition analysis as MK Dons and player analysis for a leading football agency. And yes, that is Yulan Lopetegui's son who's going to be joining the staff. Um, quite interestingly, and I don't know what the case was with Bruno Large. It was quite uh, well known that Nuno had a lot of his family over in Portugal. I think Bruno Large was the same. It sounds like Lopetegui's wife and obviously his son is going to be living within uh, uh, in and around Wolverhampton as well, which sounds a little thing, but I suppose when you've got the core of your family here, um, at the, you know, w where you are and where you're working, I think it does help out a lot. And I think that was a big factor why Nuno struggled towards the end of his tenure. And Bruno Large had a lot, gave a lot of time off for the players. Now, regarding time off, that after the match on Saturday, the players were given 10 days off. I understand why people would agree with it or disagree with it. Um, but they've got had that time off, have a little bit of breathing space, and then they will be coming back. It's understood that Wolves will be doing a training camp in Marbella, Spain, and we'll be hoping to sort out some friendly matches. But once we've got details on those, obviously we'll keep you guys updated on the social medias. As always, guys, hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know your thoughts on the latest at Wolves. Until next time, I'll see you all very, very soon.